Good morning, distinguished panel members. My name is Dr. Kathy Platoni. I am a clinical psychologist, a colonel in the United States Army Reserve, and I am the Army Reserve Psychology Consultant, which you loosely translate to Chief Psychologist for the Army Reserve. However, I am here today as a civilian practitioner with substantial human experience in both the civilian sector and in the wartime theaters of both Iraq and Afghanistan. It is my belief that we must absolutely maintain the right to use CES for our private patients, our service members, and our veterans. My disclosure is that I have no financial or equity interest in any CES company, nor am I a consultant for any CES company. I have not been compensated to be here today, however, my travel expenses only have been paid. I have extensive experience utilizing CES since 1991 in hospital-based pain management programs, private practice, and again, the wartime theaters of both Iraq and Afghanistan. Although I am not a researcher, in my role as both a civilian practitioner and as an Army psychologist, I am required to thoroughly evaluate each patient to determine diagnosis, proper course of treatment, and to assess treatment results on a continuous basis. Currently, approximately 95% of my private practice patients are in possession of their own personal alpha stim devices. This was a difficult process because of the current classification. I sincerely hope that this process can be simplified if CES is moved to class two. In my experience, without exception, there simply is no more powerful form of therapeutic intervention, either as an adjunct or as a standalone treatment that al than alpha stim CES. It is incumbent upon me as a practitioner to offer all of those treatment interventions that may affect positive outcomes, all inclusive, hence CES. In the wartime theaters of both Iraq and Afghanistan, and under the worst possible conditions that any, any human being should ever be forced to tolerate, Alpha Stim CES was the, was the single most effective form of treatment that our combat stress control team was able to provide to service members in our care. In terms of insomnia, CES was the best form of treatment we had to get soldiers to sleep, where sleep is elusive. The use of CES spread to other practitioners once they viewed such positive results. In terms of anxiety, nothing worked better to treat anxiety than CES, and again, under the most stressful conditions imaginable. In the face of desperately depressed soldiers consumed with overwhelming misery and despair, the rapid and progressive effects of CES made it possible for these soldiers not only to perform their missions, but actually to exceed standards and expectations. And with respect to PTSD, most importantly, soldiers were able to remain on mission. To deny access to CES will result in tremendous and unnecessary suffering among infinite numbers of patients who prefer not to shuffle through life stuporously as a result of medication side effects. For all intents and purposes, for those who can no longer survive or subsist under prescriptive conditions, there too often is no perceivable course of action remaining other than the taking of their own lives when boluses of multiple medications fail to reduce or ameliorate any number of psychological injuries and conditions. And what about saving lives? The deleterious impact of the FDA's decision threatening access to CES is the USA's, in the USA is immeasurable and will unquestionably potentiate an endless series of damages to those so urgently in need of alpha stim CES. So my question to you is, what justification does the FDA have to burden a small business with requiring them to go through the process the onerous process of pre-market approval when the same FDA allowed these devices to be legally marketed for 31 years, during which time there have been no significant side effects and an abundance of proof of effectiveness. I will be here for the entirety of the day and I'm available for questions. Thank you very much for your time.